Hi everyone, just um, going to show you today how I've used my bass guitar and sampled it so that I can then send and compose using MIDI. I'm using the Reaper sample matic There's just a bit of an example of um, what it looks like the final product. And um, let me just bring up a MIDI item so we can give it a bit of a play. So that's the sample from my bass guitar, basically. The reason why I'm doing this is so that I can compose the stuff in MIDI and then play it and get a pretty close sound to what it would sound like if I played, um, played the bass myself. And a bit later I'll show you how I use Tux Guitar and how I send the MIDI from Tux Guitar into um, into Reaper and I can compose in Tux Guitar and then uh, have it all sit in Reaper using that that uh, that same sampler. So I'll just bring up the actual sample file that I've used in the, in the sampler. I've got a bass file there. This is just me playing each of the um, open strings on the bass. I've got a four string bass which I've tuned to B E A D. And um, I'm just basically playing an open note on it. You can just hear that there. Um, and that's my, that's what I'm using for the sample. Um, I'll just bring up the tuner. And you can see that uh, it's not perfectly tuned. I can fix that up later, I'll show you, because I, you'll, <laughs> you'll see the rest of them are a bit out of tune as well. But this is um, just a bit flat. Bit sharp, the other two are a bit flat, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, all I've done is I've struck an open note and I'm just recording the open note there. Um, I'm letting it play out for a fair bit of time. And then um, I can use this one file in the sampler to do each of the strings basically. Okay, so uh, what I did, I, I've got four instances of the sample, I've uh, sampler-matic, I've put the same wave file in all of them, and with this one here I'm doing the bass, um, the lowest B note, so that's the, um, the B note there. And what I do here is I zoom in, you can see there is a, um, a figure there, P, um, yeah, that one there. So I normally take it down to about, I zoom into about 100, and then I just kind of match it up. I'll put the attack marker on the first strike of the first uh, trough of the, the note. Um, and I try and make that the same on all of the um, samples just to keep it consistent with them. Um, and then the end bit is something similar. I zoom into around 100 again and just make sure that it's getting a cut off before the, before the next sample. Um, the settings of the sampler make it pretty straightforward. Uh, I've got, um, I'm using the freely configurable one rather than the other one. And I found that was working best for me. Um, I've got my two MIDI loads, the lowest one and the highest one. So the lowest starting at B0, which is my um, the equivalent of my B, and um, finishing at um, B2, I think. And uh, the thing is that. Um, all I've done there is just captured what that one string from with all the frets in it, and um, and I've said that there's 25 semitones, which is basically one for each fret, I think plus one or something. Um, and that's that's basically you'll see when I play in the in the MIDI in the piano roll that all works. I've got it down to four max voices. I found um, if I put it down to one, it doesn't quite work as well. Um, and also obey note off, so that was to, and, and also there's a setting there to um, stop the MIDI notes as well. What I found is if I did less voices, which I think this one, I, I kind of reduced the number of voices as the, as the strings get higher because I was trying to um, use the lower strings more than the higher ones. Um, unfortunately, the sample is not fantastic in that it, so what I found is that the um, the stopping of MIDI notes doesn't quite work because 
um, if I have one voice active, the MIDI note will not go all the way through. It'll stop, even though there's no active voice left on that on that sample. Um, so that didn't work. So I ended up going with um, active voices four, three, two, one as I go up the strings, and um, and then I just block the the notes as we go. So it, it, it works. It's pretty good. Okay, so what I'll do next is um, I've got a bit of a, a MIDI file for a bass riff or song altogether. I'll just put up there and loop it so there's something going in the background and I'll just show you um, the next part of this. So what I'll do now is you'll see that this track here is um, feeding up into another track which has the audio settings. So if I was to record audio directly, I would record in the track above this one. Um, and so if I want to do something manually or through MIDI, I can kind of get the same kind of sound. So this is, um, I'm just playing on the riffs there. So this is my effects chain for um, for the actual audio part of it. And uh, I'll start off with a compressor. I've got a fair bit of compression going on um, just to try and keep the, the sound consistent. Um, yeah, ratios around five millisecond. If you want to just get the click out of it, um, you can make it higher if you like the attack of the bass, um, which, which is pretty good sound as well. Um, so yeah, you can hear it, hear it changing. Sound, you can even see the outputs right as the attack comes through. And my threshold, um, I'll just adjust that so that the, the average is around 18 minus 18 dB, which you can see in the, in the dynamic meter there. The, the average is um, that thick green, green one on the inside that gives you an 18. So, yeah, you can. Um, set that right. This is the, the gate. Um, it needs a little bit of an attack on it because otherwise you get a clicking sound. That's my fuzz box. These settings are pretty much I've done them already. Um, that's my sans amp. I'm using some MPEG, free MPEG um, impulse, impulses. Get a bit of a uh, shelf, my shelf. So yeah, just to just to re recap and finish up, and basically I'm using that to um, to be able to compose uh, in MIDI um, and have it play like demos and so on. Um, and get the sound closest to what my real uh, bass guitar sounds like if I play it normally. Um, and also, like I said, there's a second part to this video, which will be how I then use Tux Guitar to compose in Tux Guitar and bring it, uh, send it through to Reaper, so that Reaper will use this uh, sampler that I've just set up and and um, and play the bass for me. So thanks everyone for listening, and um, catch us later.